Tuna Foundation this beautiful Swedish Sunday afternoon, uh, just after midsummer. Uh, midsummer is a big event in Sweden. I, some of you might have experienced some of it. Uh, we might get hits of it uh, throughout the conference as well. Uh, my name is Alf Lindemann. I'm the executive director of the Sikula Foundation. Uh, I warmly welcome all of you to the Sikula Foundation today. I really look forward to the conversations we're going to have the next few days. Uh, I know that we will have a lot of input and very interesting uh, discussions. Uh, this also is an interesting place, but I will have a chance to give a little bit more information about the Sikuna Foundation as we have the reception tonight. So now I just would, would like to welcome you and turn the floor over to Hans Lindenström. Thank you, Alf. And uh, I also would like to welcome you warmly to uh, the Sigma Foundation and to the Agora for Biosystems, uh, which uh, I'm the director of uh, since it started uh, about 20 years ago. Actually, we celebrated our 20th anniversary. And uh, I will say a little bit about this uh, the Agora before we start to talk about the, the conference. Uh, the Agora for Biosystems started, as I said, in 1997 under the auspices of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. But uh, the premises we had for our activities were already at that time here, at this uh, Sigma Foundation. So we are very happy to have had a very good and intense uh, interaction and collaboration with Sigma Foundation, although we are uh, initially we were under the Academy of Sciences, but now we are also administratively under the uh, Sigma Foundation. Uh, the Amorphobi uh, by Systems was um, created as a platform or a center for dialogues between experimentalists and theoreticians in the biosciences. And uh, that was our main objective, the first objective. And uh, as a second objective, we also had or we want uh, still <laughs> to promote the dialogue between science and humanities. So in that respect, we have had a lot of symposia and uh, meetings together with the CTNA Foundation, which this year celebrates, uh, celebrates its 100th anniversary. Uh, but the Agora for Biosystems actually has had a lot of other conferences uh, that have been dealing with uh, various kinds of problems in, uh, in biology, theoretical biology, as we primarily call it. And uh, these kinds of problems could be actually started here. Our first conference was here in 1995, that is two years before we started uh, 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 to have, uh, have a center here. And that conference was about fluctuations in biological systems, the role and control of fluctuations, as we call it, uh, randomness and chaos. And this was in bio biological systems in general, but a lot of that was about uh, neurobiological systems. And uh, even though we have had many dis different types of problems that we have dealt with, from the origin of life, evolution, uh, so and so forth, uh, the main problem that we have been dealing with lately is uh, the brain-mind issue. How are uh, those related? How is the brain related to cognition, consciousness and so forth? But also we have had a project on the human nature uh, and uh, this is an ongoing project that also deals with the issue of free will as is uh, of course uh, the topic of this one. Uh, we have just finished a big EU project, uh, which we were a major part of, but that was about the transition to a low-carbon society and what is required in terms of human uh, capacity to change, to make changes, not only for the whole society, but also at the individual level. So we all often try to go deeper and maybe even broader, both broader and deeper than 
uh, one could normally do at our universities, at least in Sweden, we're rather strict in which kind of discipline you, you belong to and what kind of topic you have at your department. Uh, but at this place, uh, which is a perfect place for dialogue, as uh, Alf will tell you more about uh, tonight. And so the dialogue has been very, very good to bring people together with different backgrounds and uh, being able to discuss problems from the side of the problems itself. And of course, today we are very happy to be able to organize this conference uh, together with Uri Maus, uh, who most of you have been in contact with, all of you I guess have been in contact with, and who, whom I met the first time in about a year and a half ago when I visited UCLA. Uh, and that is, was a part of a, of a journey Alf Lindemann and myself did uh, in this project, the Human Nature Exploration Project. And uh, we wanted to see where, who else is working along the lines that we are, uh, interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, cross-cultural, and so forth. And we found this uh, gentleman <laughs> as, a, as a very good collaborator, and we are very happy to have been able to, to collaborate through with the planning of this conference. And we are very happy to have you and your student Alice, whom you also have been in contact with uh, since uh, we started this. And it's to a large extent what the work of Uri and Alice that uh, made you actually sit here today. And so I think that we are Hold on, a great uh, gratitude for that. But, uh, um, and I will not say very much more uh, right now because I think it's time to leave the word to Uri, who will tell you more about the conference and also some practicalities <coughs> with regard to how uh, the program is running. And as you have seen from the program, it's rather tight, so we will try to keep the time as much as possible, and now my time is over. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hans, uh, for a very kind introduction. Yeah, uh, I think this started when, when you were here? Yeah, into the microphone. Okay, I usually have a booming voice, but I, I will try. Uh, yeah, this started when you went to uh, Ralph Adolphs and said, we were looking for somebody to talk to Free Will about it. He said, oh, Free Will, there's a crazy guy at UCLA, you should talk to him. So yeah, that's how we met. Um, but yes, uh, and I, I thought this was very timely when, when you came over because um, I, I had this feeling, and I mean, I've met some of you before, and <coughs> this feeling that this field is starting to, to, to come together and there are people talking about free will from philosophy, from law scholarship, from, from other fields, from neuroscience, of course, and, but there's no new conference on free will, it's, 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 you maybe there's a session in SFN, maybe there's a, there are conferences about consciousness where there's something about free will, but uh, it, it's, it was like a long, long-term dream of mine to bring it together, so then when Hans came and said, yeah, we want to do a conference about free will, I said, yes, I'm in, what, what do I need to do? So he said, oh, just organize everything. I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, not exactly that, of course, they, they did most of the work, even though they're very kind of the introduction. Um, but yes, it's very, uh, for me, it's almost a fulfilling a dream to see all of you around here talking about free will, so I, I, I'm very excited about that. Um, um, but thank me after the conference ends and it turns out to be well, but I'm quite sure it will be. Um, right. Uh, one thing we wanted to talk about is we would like to have some kind of a proceeding uh, from this uh, conference. We'll talk more about that perhaps informally as well as at the end of the discussion. Um, one idea that we had, because again, there are different, different um, things that are prestigious in one field, like uh, book chapters for philosophers and law scholars, are typically a, a, a very decent way to publish your thoughts. But as a scientist, a book chapter is uh, almost a waste of your time, uh, unfortunately. So we, we had this idea to try and do uh, 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 a special issue at a, conference, at a conference, and then you could take, as a scientist, you could take your what you write in the special issue and then transform it into a. a book chapter where you can be a bit more thoughtful and a bit more, uh, um, um, let yourself 
you know, let yourself go a little bit more with your thoughts than you would in a peer review thing where every word that you say is, is scrutinized and, uh, and, and so on. Um, that was one thought. Again, we, we should have discussed this informally as well as formally at the, at the end of the, of the conference, but it's something we would really like to do, and I, I, I very much hope we can do because it's, it will reflect again what I, I, I think we are seeing is this field starting to come, come together. Um, and the second thing is that we hope for this thing not to be the last uh, conference on free, free will, but rather the first. Um, and I'm moving now from UCLA to Chapman University. It's, it's about an hour south of Los Angeles, and they have promised to host the next one uh, at Chapman. So either a year or in two years, it's, it's kind of up to us, but they, they promised to, to give us the funding to host the next, next one. Uh, in the uh, in the west coast in the U.S. slightly different weather, but otherwise, uh, yeah. uh, um, otherwise I hope to be some kind of a tradition that we will have to, to meet annually by the um, And then some bureaucracy before we move on. Um, as Hans was hinting, the conference is very intense. We somehow we thought, okay, we've got it all under control, and then there was another person who actually decided to say yes, and they said, okay, but we have to, to hear him or her too, so let's just squeeze things around so we don't really have a lot of time. Um, they made me the chairperson and the, the whip, so I will, you know, I will say, I will lift up these things, and you know, you have five minutes, two minutes, one minute, and then um, my my thing here, my my phone will start making this horrible noise. So it doesn't mean you all have to run out. It's not the fire alarm, but it doesn't mean that we have to stop because the next person has to speak. It's just we otherwise not be there. We're on a really tight schedule. Um, uh, so please bear with me and please excuse me in advance if I, uh, if I hopefully not stop you in the middle, but you know, all my interruptions are five minutes, two minutes, and, and so on. Um, yeah, uh, in the best uh, tradition of, of, of Swedish life, uh, exercise is important. So they made the coffee breaks be all the way where um, where we have dinner and lunch. If this was LA, there would be transportation waiting for you to <laughs> over there, but this is Sweden, so you have to walk. Um, but what it does mean is that with the coffee breaks, you know, we walk over, we get some exercise, we drink our coffee, we do whatever, and then we have to be back here typically 10 or 15 minutes later, so there then the, the coffee breaks will be slightly short because you have to go back and forth. Um, and last and most importantly, for those of you coming from southern countries, uh, sunrise here is 3 a.m. <laughs> there are blinds in your rooms. Lower them. Don't do what I did the first night. Just go to sleep and then wake up at 4 a.m. thinking, oh my god, it's 8 o'clock, I haven't slept. So, coming from a sentence again, it was quite a shock. So, there are blinds in your room, use them, trust me. <laughs> that was um, all my bureaucracy, and we are two minutes ahead of time, so I will now change my hat to the uh, chairperson of the uh, uh, first, uh, of our first session, Neuroscience and Philosophy. So, we will have two Neuroscience and Philosophy sessions. Uh, uh, the first one, uh, we will have five speakers. Peter Orham, Hans Brown, Peter van Niemagen, and Petra Storek, and Akulisa. I apologize if I butcher anybody's name. We have so many cultures here that I am bound to get some things wrong. And then we have a neuroscientist respond, uh, Yad Budri. She's actually especially qualified because she has a PhD in, in, in philosophy as well. And she's sitting right in the back there. Uh, and the rest of the people you will see as they come here. And um, without further ado, I suggest you move on and I start talking. Okay.